And uh, what does the slope of the straight line tell us? The order of this power law, right? So the steeper the line is, the steeper the line is, the more accurate our scheme is. Right. Basically, I mean, in general, the lower the line is, which that means the smaller the error we have. And the steeper the line is, it means as we refine, as we reduce our delta t, the faster the scheme becomes more accurate. Right. So that's what we saw uh, last, uh, last week. So we were able to derive a bunch of good derivative schemes algorithmically. Right. We use the Taylor series expansion to analyze the accuracy and uh, we were able to invert a matrix to actually derive the most accurate fourth order scheme. And uh, we figured out collectively how to turn each derivative scheme into an ODE solver. So the way to do it is just to look at the most recent time point used in the derivative scheme and move that point to the left hand side and every other point to the right hand side. Right by doing that, we converted the derivative approximation scheme to an ODE solver. And uh, you can always do the opposite, right? So given an ODE solver, you're gonna be learning forward order, backward order, trapezoidal rule, runger kata. You can always look at that ODE solver and figure out what kind of approximation are you making to the derivative scheme. And that is actually an excellent way to figure out the order of accuracy of that ODE solver, right? Basically, how accurate you are approximating the derivative is exactly how accurate your ODE solver is. But there is a catch, right? The catch is the question, do good derivative schemes always make good ODE solvers? No, right? We analyzed, we turned the several of our derivative schemes into ODE solvers. And the first one, the least accurate one, actually worked the best. So uh, let's actually just uh, rerun what we ran last Wednesday to see actually how the three derivative schemes a first order scheme, which turns out to be a fourth order, a second order scheme, which turned out to be midpoint rule, and a fourth order scheme that we derived in class, which didn't work. Right, so this is lecture three. We solved, an, uh, again, let's open this OD solver. Uh, first, uh, we solved using OD45. So let's actually make this, uh, uh, in MATLAB, you can do this double, double percentage and uh, segregate the code into multiple sections. So we can run the first section first. Uh, we can run um, <coughs> wrong section, this one. We can just run this section, okay? And we get a plot. So here what we have is the solid line is analytical solution. The dotted blue line is the result of forward order. Looks pretty good, right? Okay? That's first order accurate, so we actually see some visible error here. Now we do we run our midpoint rule. Okay, our midpoint rule is the black dot. So initially, if you look here, is the black dot. Initially, it's actually more accurate than the forward order, right? The black is uh, coincides with the solid line more accurately than the blue line. Uh, very hard to see the color, but like the the one that is closer to the solid line is the second order midpoint. But then later on, it starts to oscillate and the oscillation seems to be growing. That's not very good news. But then look at our fourth order solver, which is underneath down here. And if we click on wrong section, this is what we get. We get uh, the red line, which completely uh, runs out to 10 like something like minus 5 times 10 to the 85 right so that's wildly unstable so the answer to this question we posed last week is that not all good derivative schemes make good OD solvers so naturally the question we want to answer this lecture is what derivative schemes actually make a good OD solver all right so 
the answer to this question is uh, we want to analyze the stability, right? It's most obvious. So it turns out that if you want a good OD solver or PD solver to that uh, uh, aspect, is you want to approximate the derivatives in the PD OD accurately, and you want your scheme to be stable. So gen that's a very general statement is that if you have accurate approximation, which we basically look at how accurate we're approximating each derivative, right, through Taylor series analysis, and we can show that our scheme is stable, and the tool, the mathematical tool we use in the stability analysis is usually some form of linear algebra, is usually by computing eigenvalues of some particular matrix, okay? And basically, you do Taylor series analysis, you do eigenvalue analysis. If you have accuracy and stability, then you know I have a good OD solver or PD solver in the future.